Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. You're watching. You're also supporting independent media. Please go to the patreon.com slash Graham Elwood. It is in the show notes below. Love to get your support. Even a couple dollars a month can help me <clears throat> keep this going and even improve it even more. There's more I want to do with this. I want to make this channel as big as I possibly can. I want to interview as many big people as I can. And if I grow the audience, then I can do more shows on the road and stuff. I want to do more live shows. I want to do all that stuff. So I need your guys' help. Um, YouTube has throttled my numbers a lot. It's, so make sure you've subscribed. Click the subscribe button. Click the bell notification button. Do all that and share these videos. Because then what you can do is help make Gotham great again. Boom. Look at that graphic. So what I want to talk about today was an article is in The Intercept. Um, Government can spy on journalists in the U.S. using invasive foreign intelligence process. This is by Courier, Cora Courier, September 17th. The link, uh, the in full article is in the show notes below. It's pretty crazy. Again, it's more of the surveillance state that may, a lot of it was started by Bush after 9-11 and then Obama expanded it. And now we've got Trump or Reno, just we've got no personal anything. And if, if you go back to the video that I did with Susie Dawson about the WikiLeaks Vault 7, one of the things she talks about is the NSA's sort of end game of they want to, you know, they want to surveil everybody. They want to hold, they want to just have control over everything and everybody. It's, it's a form of madness. But here's what's going on. The U.S. government can monitor journalists under a foreign intelligence law that allows invasive spying and operates outside the traditional court system. Boy, that's not a red flag at all. No, 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 no. Because it's the courts are there to get in the way of governments, not hold them accountable. <laughs> yeah, get around that. According to the newly released documents, targeting members of the press under the law known as the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. Oh, boy. It's like when Bush bombed Al-Qaeda. He dropped rockets on Al-Qaeda. You can, or not Al-Qaeda. Well, yes, he did that. But Al Jazeera, I'm sorry. When he dropped rockets on Al Jazeera. <laughs> you might not like Al Jazeera's reporting, but then did that mean Obama got, got to rocket Fox News? You see what, when we, we open this up, how crazy it is? Requires approval from the Justice Department's highest ranking officials, the documents show. In two 2015 memos for the FBI, the Attorney General spells out procedures for processing Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act applications targeting known media entities and known members of the media. Remember the Chelsea Manning video of the two journalists getting taken out by a U.S. drone? Remember that? I did a video on Serena Shim, who is a U.S. journalist, born in America, born in Detroit, who uncovered how we were letting ISIS through, through Turkey, through our base in Turkey, to go into Syria, and she was killed. The guidelines say the Attorney General, the Deputy Attorney General, or the, their delegate must sign off before the Bureau can bring an application to the secretive panel of judges who approves monitoring under the 1978 Act, which governs intelligence-related wiretapping and other surveillance carried out domestically and against U.S. persons abroad. 1978, President Carter. You see how dangerous this is? And this is what they do. They take the, this, this act was passed in 1978. I can't say I'm a fan of it, but then they expand it. That's what they keep doing. And that's why everyone that's all up in arms about Trump and this like, just get any Democrat in there. Well, the Democrats have, uh, under, this, this is 2015, right? Obama let this happen. He went after journalists, as did Bush. The 17 year, $5 trillion global war on terror that has not ended terrorism at all is now just, they can do this. Domestically and against US persons abroad. Intelligence related wiretapping. 
secretive pan like this is just madness so the article gets some different points of view on it here's one jim dempsey a professor at berkeley's law and a former member of the privacy and civil liberties oversight board an independent federal watchdog said that the rules were quote a recognition that monitoring journalists poses special concerns and requires higher approval i look on it as a positive something the media should welcome This is why you need an independent media. The media used to be watchdogs to power. Now they guard power. They're the guard dogs for power. And governments can go after journalists? Here's a different point. I don't know that I agree with Jim Dempsey. <laughs> The media should welcome it. So he sees this secret panel as like, oh, it's good that the government has this secret panel that they can get approval to go after journalists. It's like, you're missing the whole point, Jim. <laughs> but Ramya Krishman, a staff attorney with the Knight Institute, said the concerns remained. There's a lack of clarity on the circumstances when the government might consider a journalist an agent of a foreign power. She said, think about WikiLeaks. The government has said they are an intelligence operation. That's the problem. WikiLeaks, which literally just gets information from whistleblowers and puts it out there. They verify their sources and they never give up their sources ever, ever, ever. The Intercept has given up sources. The WikiLeaks never gives up their sources and because they give up information, that is very damning to those in power, now they're called a, 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 an intelligence breach or they're a, a foreign agency or they're terrorists. Or You see how this works? You put out some information showing how corrupt those in power are and then the, the government says, oh, they're criminals. That's what they're doing. Hannah Block uh, Webba, a professor at Drexel University, said that a probable example would be surveillance of reporters who are working like for someone like RT, the state-funded Russian television network. And as a consequence, anyone who is talking to reporters for RT, the reporters are probably conscious they are subject to surveillance, but the sources might not be. Right? RT funded, they always say, like, when, when, whenever... Like Chris Hedges was on recently promoting his book. He was on MSNBC and they're like, he's a journalist. Uh, he's a reporter for RT, which is funded by the Russian government. They always say that. Nobody goes, oh, we're talking to Rachel Maddow from MSNBC, which is funded by the defense contractors, the big pharma and oil lobby and the war machine. Rachel, thank you for, thank you for being on the show. <laughs> you know, they never do that. You notice they never do that. See, that's, this, is, this, is the, this is the gray area that they use these type of laws to go after RT, go after WikiLeaks. They won't go after CNN or Fox or any of those people because those people are towing the, the propaganda of the deep state line. Targeting journalists for surveillance, especially when trying to determine their sources, has historically been limited by First Amendment concerns. In 2015, after it emerged that the Obama administration had secretly seized phone records from the Associated Press, Obama did that, and named a Fox News reporter as a co-conspirator in a leak case, former Attorney General Eric Holder instituted new guidelines that made the targeting of journalists in criminal cases a last resort, still can do it, and said that the Justice Department ordinarily needed to notify journalists when their records were seized. The guidelines still worried advocates, however, because they left room for the use of national security letters. In 2016, The Intercept obtained 2013 guidelines that showed that national security letters involving the media required only two extra layers of sign-off. Boy, that's comforting. The Justice Department has since said that the FBI does not currently use the letters against journalists for leak investigation, but it's not clear how often They've been used in the past or other contexts. Oh, good. Keep it vague. Don't want transparency in a democracy. 
oh wait, we're not a democracy. We're a kleptocracy run by oligarchs. I could be deemed an, 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 enemy, <laughs> an enemy of the state. If I get big enough, they could do it to Jimmy Dore. They could do it to anybody. It is probably easier and quicker for the government to use traditional law enforcement tools rather than FISA to go after leakers, said Blockwebna, especially since officials would not want to disclose intelligence methods if, if a case went to court. One concern would be evidence laundering, she said. They could learn something about a journalist's source and then go back and use ordinary methods to get the same information. Making it, which is, the, what you can see the veiled threat in this is, hey, whistleblowers, we could find out who you are. We could now come after you using this. So you might want to keep your mouth shut. That's what this is saying. Keep your mouth shut, whistleblowers. Shut up. Know your place. Snowden, Chelsea Manning, shut your mouths. That's what this is saying. The Justice Department and the FBI both declined comment on the guidelines. Well, that's weird. They didn't want to, they, these, two, these, two, these two guys, that's this, this dynamic duo of truth, both declined to comment on the guidelines because they're always, oh, it's national security. We can't give, we can't disclose that because it's about, okay. All right. Including about whether they had been revised since 2015, how often FISA applications concerning journalists were made, and whether FISA warrants could be used in league as investigations. Why should the American public know? Let's just keep it vague. They could probably go after journalists. They are. They could go after their sources. Any journalist that's uncovering something that they don't like or hurts their profitability or hurts their ability to surveil on average citizens or commit war crimes, eh, we'll just let them do whatever they want. Don't worry, guys. Just keep watching CNN. I'm just some hippie weirdo and uh, standing in front of a TV screen wearing a Batman shirt. So who gives a shit what I think? Thanks for watching.